ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, I cannot be with you in person uh, tonight, what I really regret, but it is impossible due uh, to other commitments. So uh, please uh, accept by ways of this video message. This is Gun Cranks. <laughs> Hey there, everybody. We're back. It's the Gun Cranks. I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat, along with my cohorts, Tom McHale, the editor of American Handgunner, and Roy Huntington. The He's kind of like the 007 of FMG Publications. He's like the special assignments editor. He takes all the jobs that are too unsavory for the rest of us. Anyway, he looks hey guys. like Daniel Craig, too, doesn't <laughs> he? Yeah, nobody he else wants him is why I do him. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we love having you here, but today we are going to do a special episode. We're going to focus on the recently concluded Olympics. Our producer for the Gun Cranks is our own Sherry Legate, and she was the color commentator for the NBC uh, network coverage of the Olympic shooting sports. And, you know, I got to say, the ratings were down 50%. I think the whole country is tired of the woke BS that went on with the majority of Oh, well, with some of the sports, but the one sport that didn't have that kind of stuff going on was the shooting sports, and we did really well. So I Bravo. think, guys, what we need to do is change the Olympics. So why don't we come up with some ways <laughs> we can do things differently and model them after yes. our uh, uh, U.S. shooting athletes that represented our country so well? You know, you are exactly right, though, because I tried watching some of the Olympics and I was just, it was, a lot of it was a snore fest. I'm sorry, you know, <laughs> and, and like you say, everyone was just dragging their heels and going through the motions and then the woke stuff, you know, and everybody having to make some statement up on the, you know, podium. I, w I just love the fact that most of the USA shooting team, they're posing with a flag wrapped around their shoulders. Now, I mean, it was just so pro, you know, and, and spirited America, but out of curiosity, I got to thinking and I thought, you know what, these Olympics have gone back a long time. Can you say ancient Greece? <laughs> and I can't imagine them having, I don't know, soccer or, you know, I'm not sure what. Skateboarding. Other they, skateboarding. Skateboarding. They had bocce skateboarding. Ball. Yeah. yeah, you know, bocce ball in the Parthenon. I mean, I don't know. So I did a little bit of research on past Olympic sports. And I'll be honest with you, when I first landed on the website, I thought, this is a joke. This, this is somebody <laughs> like, like, this is like, these are made up Olympic sports that we think would be really fun to have, you know, except that wasn't true. It actually was a list of real Olympic sports. Let me start it with what I think we need to bring back, <laughs> which no. is horse plunging for distance. <laughs> no, this is a, they have a picture of it. And so you, a rider on a horse gets on the edge of like a dock looking thing and they leap out and like a like a, a long distance jumper and who whatever horse gets the farthest is there you go. You win a medal for that. So and this was before doping rules, right? They had to I'm I, you sure know, they had to feed these horses something special to And you were probably allowed to have a male <laughs> horse or a female horse. You didn't have to call them the they, <laughs> you know. And so I hung up. Why do they call it plunging? That just implies you kick a horse off a cliff. I'm envisioning a cliff. I don't know, you measure yeah. the splatter. I don't know. The maybe just well, horse long jump would be better. Well, no, they had horse long jump. They had horse long jump. I kid of you course. not. And for a standing, they had standing <laughs> jump, and then they had run, 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 woo, jump. You know, horse long. Well, see, I think that's pretty fun. And I think, you know, I think it'd be great. I'd love to see that. So they had, uh, oh, yeah, I love this one. 200 meter swimming obstacle course. <laughs> see, no, 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 that but think about wrong. it. I, I mean, I think it'd be really fun and interesting because I think what we need is some visually interesting things. It's like, I got it, a 10,000 meter foot race or something, and those are great athletes. But when you watch them, it's like, okay, how, how many more laps are they going to do now? <laughs> right? you know, and it's like, okay, unless somebody falls down or something. Yeah. But, but you got to admit, 
swimming obstacle course. And so was you it had mines to, or what that they had? Yeah, well, just about. I mean, you had to swim, and then you had to climb out onto things and climb up a ladder and fall off and dive in and swim <laughs> under. And it was like those ninja tryout TV shows. Yeah, I would love only like it that. Was a little, I was going to say, it everybody sounds like them. Navy SEAL screening quals or something. <laughs> it's the BUDS like course. They, yeah. That's what they need to do is bring the BUDS court in, you know, that where those SEALs qualify yeah. for a week. It's a week-long Olympic event. Oh, Team man. Wet and Sandy, right? Team yeah. Wet and Sandy. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be a lot of fun. The best one I saw, though, the best one I saw, I crossed my heart, hope to die. It's, it was legitimate was pistol dueling. It was an actual <laughs> Olympic sport. They used to run it where they had the fencing guys. And it was like in a little like, <laughs> they had a picture where it was like, three guys with handlebar mustaches holding dueling pistols. I didn't read all the details. They obviously didn't really shoot each other. I don't know, maybe they did. <laughs> but these bowler hats, you know, and they were posing kind of like outside the tent where the... So obviously it wasn't like a five-star Olympic event, <laughs> but wow. but they had pistols uh, dueling. And by golly, we I need see. to bring those back, Tom. We do. I, well, I think, think? there... I like that, and I, I think there's some improvement possibilities. Here's... I'm thinking maybe for this special edition of the Olympics, let's come up with our own gun person friendly. I mean, Perfect. hey, U.S. shooting team, they're an inspiration. Let's take that. Let's take that solid uh, start that they've given us and create our own. So, Roy, you, you, got, on you inspired it. one. We're going to build on it. You inspired one already with that last one you talked about because I think we should bring back dueling. But but like real dueling. Now there's some there's some caveats. I've I've kind of thought through the rules on this, and here's how it works. Okay, we have each country has 112 qualification rounds, you know, at home be, to to select the Olympic team. But it's real dueling. But here's the gotcha. The We're only people rot in hell for this. <laughs> the only people allowed to compete to to go out for the team are career politicians with term with 15 years of service or more. Uh, okay. It's actually really So so we I'm have 112 this. rounds here, you know, in the home country, and anybody who's left at that point gets to go compete at the Olympics in the real dueling <laughs> event. And that that's where they compete for medals. So How, how does wounding and any, score? Wait, and any and anyone who survives and wins gets hung. No. Well, yeah, either that or the seconds, the seconds have to take out the medalists at That's the end. That's true, yeah, because you don't want the best one of those to survive no, you after don't. that. you don't. So, That's really, I like that so, a lot. So, you know, maybe our shooting team are the seconds or something. I, you know, we could, you, <laughs> Wow. Oh, we That's, could so raffle. I know millions of Americans would, <laughs> would The ratings volunteer. would be through the roof. <laughs> Wow. Right. I'll bring my own Brent, ammo, so, damn it. So know? that's my that's my contribution, Brent. What do you got? That's a, that's a little harsh, Tom. You know, I was kind of wondering about the uh, the scoring system. I mean, like is wounding, you know, uh, well, it looks like uh, Bill's taking a wing shot. There you go. Step, drag, stumble, drool. Step, drag, stumble, drool. Wow. We'd have to get Sherry, you know, who did the shotgun sports yeah. with it. We, she would have to call this. Okay. You know, do the... Color, I think yeah. that's what they call it. Color commentary. Well, yeah, that's that's a little maybe homo- maybe skeet for whoever's left. You launch them across the trap field <laughs> the, or something. And the anger here, the anger is is amazing. Well, it's politicians. I, I mean, come on. I, I've got one that might be more in line with the Olympic spirit of everybody. Okay. probably should survive. How about we do a new gun obstacle course? And what that is, competitors line up carrying a full-size rifle or shotgun box, and the idea is you have to sneak it from the start line to your gun locker without a spouse, played by the judges, seeing you bring that box into the house. So you've got to go, you know, around the corner, under the uh, sofa, you know, uh, maybe slither over a roof and in a window, and then when you get that box into the gun safe, then that, that is your time. Time. Can you I can you use props like can you ring her cell phone in the other room or something to <laughs> yeah. create a distraction? Yeah, yeah I think yeah. any distraction kind of, okay. is fair game. And yeah. the cool, cool thing is we've got twenty or well more than that. I'm not sure the total number of gun owners in the country right now, but every single one of them has done this. Wow! Good okay. lord, there's an I entire like class of amateur experts who've been training their entire life <laughs> for this event. And you know what, Brent? Though you bring up a good point because I was already, as you started to say that, I thought 
we need uh, go through the TSA checkpoint Olympic oh. because uh, every single one of them is a challenge. You never know what's going to happen. You <laughs> never know what you're going to have to do. The questions change every time you do it. And when you're all done with it, you're not quite sure if you did it right or if you'll ever see your gun back again. <laughs> now, tell me that's not a competition, by God. That's true. <laughs> and, and we've all lived through it. So, well, cool. Yeah, I'm, and different I'm thinking, did you guys catch any of the pentathlon? No. I there, can't it's even called, say it's that. It's called <laughs> the modern pentathlon, and it's like five events, you know, like horse riding and shooting and swimming. But I'm thinking we need the modern, modern pentathlon. Now, I'll right. need some help on the, the five events, but but I'm thinking, like, um, mask wearing is the first one, you know. Um, microaggression could be a good one. Yeah. No, Nonviolent Molotov cocktail. It'd be cocktail. funny if it wasn't so true, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. A Molotov cocktail Shaming. toss for distance. Yeah. You know. I don't know. Just a thought. Did. Don't even, yeah, riot organizing. I mean, you know, cynical that we can be. I mean, where do you draw the line on this kind of stuff? You know, dem frontline demonstrations, you know, yeah. who can shoot, who can throw, uh, you know, OC spray canisters the farthest <laughs> back toward the cops. You know, there's a lot of Olympic sports here, I think. I did think of an honest one, though, in light of the ammunition pandemic that just occurred. And, uh, you know, I, I think we may have even talked about it one time, but it needs to be an Olympic sport, and that is, is ammo can carry. Yes. Practical uh, weightlifting. That's a good one. You know, how Practical many can you carry and balance and run the distance from the front door of a gun store to your car without anybody seeing you to make a counter right. offer? <laughs> So, while putting your wallet back in your pocket <laughs> exactly. and trying to activate your car key fob, exactly. right? You know? But I'm seeing these guys dressed in camo, right? With a with like a broomstick and then ammo cans slid on either. <laughs> so there's <laughs> there's two helpers, right? And you put and then somebody like Sherry would say, and this is the hundred and sixty pound world championship <laughs> attempt <laughs> that we're about deadlift. It's thirty odd six BMG ball ammo. rounds in those yeah, cans. 50 yeah. And so then so two people put two on and then it's an easy clean lift, right? <laughs> two more and then the bar starts to hang a little bit. But then you have to be careful because they'll slide off. So you yeah. have to, you know, be you uh, have to be a lot of things. So, so I think I like grace it. and strength and yeah. you know, yeah, I like that. Idea. Fashion, okay. right, there'll good. be fashion, that's and good. then I like it because it doesn't matter how fat you are. Doesn't matter anything yeah. if you know if you can carry ten ammo cans. You're a competitor. Makes sense. There you go. And and which is actually interesting because I see those guys that have been buying twenty thousand rounds of. AR ammunition and ammo cans and stuff. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to be experts at this. Thing, exactly. You know? <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but have you ever picked up a full ammo can of any ammo? Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> all right, that's senseless. Well, I've come up with one that's kind of in the track and field genre, and it is the out okay. outdoor hunter hurdles. So the <laughs> athlete has to be dressed up in his upland hunting gear. Uh, including, you know, blaze orange coat and a kind of a goofy hat, and is carrying a shotgun. And this is modeled after what like uh, uh, chucker, pheasant, quail hunters go through. So you start running, and you know it could be whatever distance is appropriate. Maybe have different ones for different classes. You got to hurdle a barbed wire fence without getting caught on it, and then you have to leap <laughs> a, a ditch filled with you know all kinds of horrible green slime and mud at the bottom and then you know maybe uh maybe bail over another fence and then bail over a, a round bail out in a field and there's all kinds of stuff like that that upland hunters and then at the end they release a clay pigeon and you have to drop it what do you think it's like, it's kind of like a, a cool a good Wait. gun version of a steeplechase yeah. it sounds like i was gonna say like but, it. but we like do it. that for real though yeah, yeah i know what you mean you know well, that brings up that way kid i this brings up one though that makes it's personal for me, and that is the gunsmith spring search event, <laughs> and that it starts in a garage type Pew! setting. The floor is littered with dog poo and you know <laughs> mice turds and nuts and bolts and other things that have fallen off your cars. Some Lego blocks that your kid left out there. You know, unknown sticky areas on the floor and things like that. And so it starts with 
the contestant on the workbench disassembling a gun, and at some point where he doesn't know when it's going to happen, a spring goes, bang, right? And that's when the clock starts. And I personally think it'd be really entertaining. <laughs> can you that curse? Just can me. the contestants curse in, in extra their own points. language? Okay. Extra points. Extra yeah. points. For, hey, especially if you do about, it in a foreign language. Yeah. I got it. Brent, I got a track mm -hmm. and field one. I was, I was, uh, kind of came to me while you were talking about steeplechase, okay. which I love. And it would, it's a relay. It's a team relay. It's the four by 100 <laughs> ammo by relay. Okay. Okay. So each member of the team, the first guy goes and he has to buy a box of ammo, okay. right? As soon as he does, the second guy goes and they have to go find and buy a box of ammo, you know, and this could take a while because yeah. there isn't any. Right, uh, but but you got to impose some time penalties here, kind of like hurdles, you know, when you knock one down yeah. or don't jump it or whatever. So I, I'm thinking like for every dollar over thirty bucks a box you pay, you lose five seconds from the team. Wow. <laughs> what do you think? So the gold oh, medal round is clearly <laughs> like we make it easier in the in the preliminaries, like like rim fire, like twenty two or shotgun or something. But the gold medal round is nine millimeter. You have to find nine millimeter ammo and buy it. So. Wow. That could get and, long and expensive. Wait. <laughs> and you have to wear those geeky headphone citizen band radio things <laughs> with a microphone to talk to your, your teammates at the same time. To set You've the seen tone. that guy at the so, gun show. Guys, I you? found it. I found it, guys. I found it. Over here. Over here by the popcorn stand. Wait, I want to go back to some original Olympic sports. Okay. <laughs> this is this is, and they had a picture of this one. This is the truth. Solo synchronized swimming. I, I, really? The picture they had was a guy, they I'm not sure how to say that nowadays, but inverted feet outside of the water and both feet in an artistic, you know, conjunction with each other. And that's all there was. The right, so they're I honest, cross my heart, honest, solo synchronized swimming. It doesn't make sense at any level, yeah. including the name, yeah, because I'm not sure how you synchronize with yourself, and, and yeah, that inspires me. We could do a, a shooting related one. You're dressed up like a duck hunter, you stand in a really tippy boat, and you have to stand and take a shot, and then you go overboard. And you have to, you know, do all of your ah, and then you you get your feet up with without the, dropping your without gun. dropping your gun. Of course, you got boots and you got heavy coats and probably insulated coveralls. I think that would be fantastic. And and all the different moves you could come up with, like you know, if you can get yourself up out of the water with a decoy on your head, you know, kind of you know holding the shotgun artistically, that would be fantastic. Well. That it's is a good of, point, though. You just said the magic yeah. word because they used to call it synchronized swimming, like these team things. Now it's artistic. Swimming. Oh, is it? So I'm, I'm thinking also maybe like artistic gun cleaning. <laughs> you know, five <laughs> five person squads. Each one gets a Glock, and they have to do artistic gun cleaning. Except you're not allowed to get high from the solvent. That would be the only bad thing. <laughs> Look, I'm going to tell you another one. No hobby. This is number nine, right? <laughs> this is we. I don't know that we can properly match the reality of past uh, Olympic sports that were vetted by the National Olympic Committee, but I think one of the riveting ones that they need to bring back, and, and frankly, when I saw this, it just, I, I thought, my heart started to beat fast because I thought, holy cow, that would be exciting to watch. They actually had an Olympic event called town planning. <laughs> What? I, I swear to you, town planning. Wow. And I didn't delve into the specifics, but I just kept thinking of this guy with a visor and those white, you know, <laughs> arm yeah. things sitting at a what desk a with a square and a, you know, and a T measure thing and like doing, and judges sitting around like this. Well, I was going to say, yeah, how would the, the run, color run. commentator on the TV broadcast well, look, oh, he is, he's put a sewage lift station oh. right there at the corner of Maple and Elm. Oh. Can you believe oh. it? Broke his pencil. Oh, it's a disaster. That's going to, that's a it's setback. Gonna throw him out you know. of metal contention. That's, <laughs> wait, wait. He's reaching for his coffee cup. <laughs> wow. You know. Yes. Complete. Actually, it, Monty know. Python no, did a skit like that called novel writing. And 
You need to listen to it because that's exactly. Well, he started with the definitive article. Oh no, he's crossed it out. This is, you know. But you know, we could bring back the Monty Python gang though to to uh, to be the color commentators be for all of these different Olympics we're doing. You know, they had one though. Do you remember in Monty Python it was the the extraordinary walks? <laughs> You know, it was the Ministry of Extraordinary yeah. Walks, and it was so. There's all these guys being goofy, stupid wow. walks like that. So, so if we did that plus a pistol combat match, that could be hmm. interesting. Well, there's well, a lot you of guys, grist you guys. You guys do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna be watching the buckshot put. <laughs> now, I have I have no earthly idea what the rules are, what the event is. I just absolutely love the name. I mean, buckshot. It's a good yeah. name. <laughs> That's perfect. Well, I came up. I watch it. Whatever they do. I came up with a simple one that we could do today, and it, it kind of hits both of these. We take an established sport that has a following and a whole hierarchy behind it, and we turn it into gun related. It would be fencing, but using cleaning rods. <laughs> you know, you don't have to change anything except you I've take done the foils. That. Of course you have. Can, can you use carbon fiber? I would think so. That would be don't, the high-tech version. Don't you do that? Okay. Can <laughs> we, you put I one of those sharp the jags on the end, the kind, the push-through kind, you know, with the little points <laughs> yeah. on them? With the little flutes on them? There's like little Okay, back flutes. up, Roy. Yeah, you've you mean, done this. You know. I'm not surprised, but do tell. I'll make a video, better yet. <laughs> yeah. It was an impromptu thing in the crime lab at the police department. I mean, it's like there we were, the three musketeers, and we all happened to have a cleaning rod in our hands, and pretty soon we were fencing. And of course, the lab administrator walked in, but he was a cool guy. He wanted to know, could he play too? <laughs> so that was a good crime lab. Yeah, we had a lot of fun there. So. And hey, uh, I thought of one more, though, is have you ever shot a full-auto Glock pistol? Mm -hmm. if, if you haven't, you got to. It it's is big just, fun. It's beyond so much fun. Yeah, there's a Breda 92. They make a full auto Breda 92 and stuff like that. And so I'm kind of being facetious, but kind of not being facetious, which is a big word for me to use. But we need to have an Olympic combat pistol match where they use full auto pistols. Tell me that wouldn't be a spectator <laughs> sport. <laughs> I know. Now, you remember, yeah, I know. the next Olympics is in France, oh. so... All the more reason to do it, by <laughs> golly. Because the French people, they'll bring some stupid gun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, well, actually, that'd be so a fun shot. part of this, is that you have to bring whatever your national gun is, you know? So we naturally would have to develop select fire 1911 pistols. 1911s, yeah. yeah. So the Austrians would be using Glocks. The French would use some f rearward recoiling upside down magazine. Probably slingshots or something. Eight yeah. millimeter label. <laughs> you know what I mean? That won't work very much and they only drop them. Watch out for the Russian so. Olympic Committee on this event. Yeah. I think, uh, that would be an interesting one. Thing. I, who knows what they would do? I think there's a lot of potential yeah. on that one. And, when, and I think in all seriousness, we need to... We need to really think. And besides that, IDPA administrator, if you're listening to this now, <laughs> it's in your court. Start yep. next week. I'm if in. somebody's got I'm a watching. class three full auto pistol, you need to have a match where they use full <laughs> auto guns. And, uh, and you have to empty the magazine without stopping on each stage. Can we combine <laughs> that with the politician dueling event or no? <laughs> wow. You guys, you guys are, are frightening target, me. So. I actually, I as you were talking though, I came right. up with another one that would kind of fit this. Just transitioning an established sport and make it more shooting uh, oriented. Even though this one's already kind of a shooting sport, is the winter biathlon instead of you know using the I think they use twenty two bolt actions. I've not watched it a couple times, yeah. but mm -hmm. I think what they should be using is big bore lever actions. You know. <laughs> like you, know, yeah, you yeah. see you see Hans <laughs> doing his thing and then he stops and he's shooting a 4570 with full hard cast loads <laughs> <laughs> That would we Americans cool. would do that, by <laughs> golly. You know, yep. you just said something interesting, and I think this is a way that we can bring stock car racing back because, you know, everyone is kind of just, you know, it's kind of, it's pretty predictable now, and it's the same people, and they, they don't even, they're not yeah. stock cars. You know, they haven't been for decades, you know, they're all prima donnas, but what if they allowed each guy to have, like, one of these full auto pistols in the car with them, and so... Suddenly, though, see, that changes the whole dynamic of the race. Because just because you're in front doesn't necessarily mean you're going to stay well, in the front. 
<laughs> and it just brings a whole element yeah, in there. Going so, back, I, going old school, since I'm, I'm going to go on you guys' version of live fire against people, what if we go like old school cop moves? This was before my time, but I, I heard the stories from the old guys. Back when, if you were in a pursuit, it wasn't uncommon, the passenger officer would hang out of the car like they do in the movies and crank <laughs> rounds off. So that would put a whole new spin on this, and drafting would be a challenge. But, uh, you know, you, you can only yeah, shoot the boy. tires, but I'm sure that would lead to some spectacular yeah, I mean, you wrecks. Yeah, you got to keep it safe. You know? <laughs> and, you could, and you could do it with the motorcycle sidecar racing because that is a natural. And Because yeah. the, the sidecar guy, because, you know, they do, they lean out and they lean out and they, all that. If you could introduce gunfire into that, that would... Yeah, that would. Well, I might even well, actually like watch the, that. In that in I, that cyclodrome yeah. thing or whatever the heck velodrome yeah. events, you know, with the bikes and the ramps going around. <laughs> side cars, how about yeah. that figure eight racing? So as you're making <laughs> oh the intersection, God. guys might be shooting at each other. Does Does anybody have the know. number for the IOC? We got some wow. good stuff here. I'm sure think, we'll be we hearing turn about these, them. So. These in and, yeah. uh, get them on the and you know what the craziest thing? I about, think we need I mean, to stop before we get they're arrested. They're adding break dancing <laughs> next time. Why won't they exactly. add our stuff? I you mean, know, come on. And actually, that was what that was a, a yep. past. I, I forgot to tell you about yep. that. Break, break dancing, dancing was an Olympic. Absolutely. Yes, I, that's well, why it's coming I, up again in Paris. So it'll right. be in the Paris sure. Well, Olympics. I agree, Tom. Oh, really, yeah. so, we yeah. have we have come up with some brilliant ideas here that I think need to be applied to the uh, the greater Olympics as a whole and bring in that, yeah. you know, yeah. USA shooting team spirit that we back our country and we're proud to be privileged to represent our country. So if you know anybody on the International <laughs> Olympic Committee, first of all, shame on you. But second of all, browbeat them into contacting the gun cranks <laughs> and picking up some of our ideas. Maybe not the shooting yeah. at each other, but, but some of the rest of Well, guys, any, any other... Uh, ideas here as we close this thing out. I know there's plenty. <laughs> no, but I I, give, I want to give one more shout out to our shooting team. You, I, I hey I I saw our own producer Sherry Legate on TV. I listened to her call some of the uh, international trap, which is bunker trap, which is a crazy <laughs> hard sport. Uh, saw some of that. Saw some air gunning. Um, so we we had we had some good yeah. results there. They made us proud. And, and the problem will be for the next three years till the ne next Olympics, everybody's all up and about shooting uh, USA shooting sports, and then they'll kind of forget about it. So don't forget about it. Help them out. Send them some money. Visit it on the web and support our athletes because they're training today for the next Olympics. So I, anyway, and maybe they'll have a few new events by the time it rolls around. You never know what the French are going to come up with. Maybe they'll listen to the gun cranks. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, the biggest probably surprise of all is the fact we're not drinking when we do this, uh, even though it might appear that way after some of these ideas today. Speak okay, for yourself. Well, I, I'm trying to maintain some decorum. <laughs> check us out. Check out GunsMagazine.com, AmericanHandgunner.com, uh, AmericanCop.com, and all of our various and sundry publications, websites, social media, and all that good stuff. And please, 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 above all, Reach down right now and hit that little like and subscribe button that you see down there because that's really important. That's how the, the powers that be know that people are actually watching. So make sure you do that. And as I always say, build a small religious shrine to us in the corner of your den or office. We appreciate that. So anyway, we have been the Gun Cranks, and this has been another Off the Rails edition. Uh, join us at the next show. We'll come up with some more bizarro stuff. But hey, remember... Gun and fun are only one letter apart, and that's what we're trying to do here. So on behalf of Roy Huntington and Tom McHale, I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat. It's been fun. <laughs>